Hello and welcome to my video on how to hex edit Romance of the Three Kingdoms 8. Uh, originally for the PS2 but now on the PCSX2 emulator on a PC. So this is the promised video that I uh, that I told you guys that I was going to deliver in my previous Tactical Mastery series. I've been alluding to it the whole time. And I'm super excited, although quite a bit uh, fatigued by now in the day, to give this information to you because it pretty much allows you to Emu uh, it, wait, it pretty much allows you to modify anything in the game that you want. So, in order to do this, in order to play first the game on your PC, you want the PCSX2 emulator, and you want the 1.0.0 version, because at least one of the versions that are after this, I've tried them, and it just horrendously fucks up with the game's graphics. I mean, the game doesn't have any too many graphics to begin with, but when it gets to the point where you can't even read what tactics, what the levels of your tactics are, there's a problem. <laughs> um, so you want the 1.0.0 version. You could get that by simply, you know, typing PCSX2 1.0.0 in the computer. The first link doesn't work, but the second one does. Let me just show you. The first link tells you how many times it's been downloaded, but it doesn't let you download it. It's 13 million times. So by the looks of it, by how many times these things have been downloaded before from this website alone, I'm going to guess that most of you guys watching this video I already know what this is, but just for those who don't, I don't want you to miss the party, because it's it's pretty awesome. You can pretty much play any PS2 game you want, uh, including this one, and this is the purpose of me showing it to you now. You just click this, and it'll install it on your computer, but, you know, I don't need it. You will. Um, <clears throat> it won't install on your computer, you'll just download the setup files, and then you can set it up. There are videos on YouTube to help you get it set up, like this one. Um, so just follow those, and eventually you'll want the settings that, well, most of these settings, it doesn't really matter, and they're just default, but just go on through, if you're, you know, if you're confused or something's wrong, go on through these settings, pressing pause every now and then, and you'll see what uh, things you want, like this BIOS file right here. BIOS files in the PCSX2 are used for starting up the PS2 on the original console, so that code that is uh, copywritten by Sony is needed for the PC PCSX2 to even operate. And uh, given that it's copywritten by Sony, it's technically illegal to distribute and download, but Google's your friend in this, and it'll tell you how to, if you can, extract it from your PS2 or otherwise. Um, there's a whole bunch of things called plugins, which are just, I don't know, like, like different things that just help you set up stuff inside of the game, like your gamepad. If I go to the pad thing and I configure, then my gamepad that I'm using, <clears throat> which is just a regular, P actually PS3 controller, I was able to map the keys um, from the controller onto things inside of this plugin, and onto the controls inside of this plugin, assigned to the, to the various buttons. Uh, also, I could use my keyboard for it. Uh, I used to use my keyboard for it. You can use your keyboard or you can have another um, another with controller for it. So you just have to go through all this and configure your stuff. Um, remember folders where things are at. Take that into account. And uh, I'll just show you this real fast. Plugin settings for the video. I mean, it's just native and I just happen to have these here. I don't think these matter too much. When you get to this setting, though, it might... If you pick like null, it won't work. Uh, interfacing will change stuff. Just leave it like this. And once you get all that set up, well, once you have the BIOS file, which is that code I talked about before, and you've installed the PCSX2, then you need to procure for yourself uh, something called a ROM or an ISO file. And an ISO is just the game, basically. It's game information. You can you can copy it from your your game discs or once again you can look around and try and you know find a substitute for that and and when you do that you want to get this file right here rtk8.bin or the main .bin file that was on your disc and you'll be loading it into this through the iso selector you can hit browse here to go into your computer's files and look am i still recording I, 
swear I, I'm so paranoid about that. Um, but once you do, do all that and you've picked the ISO, you got PSAS 6.2 downloaded, then you can boot it. I'm just going to start fresh from the beginning and it's like starting up a regular PS2 on your computer. <clears throat> yeah, if you're if you already know how to download all this, I guess it's a little bit too late to tell you now. You could have skipped most of this and gone straight to what is actually going to be immediately following this, which is my discussion of uh, the hex editor. But whatever. So the game's starting. Um, I'll go one more screen. So you know it's RTK8, and we're actually playing on a computer. All right, so that's the PCSX2, and you like once again went 1.0. Next, I'll talk about Cheat Engine. Cheat Engine is a hexadecimal emulator, or no, it's a hexadecimal editor. So basically, when you are loading the ISO from your computer, it's getting straight, it's getting sent straight to your memory. This .bin file is around 496 megabytes, if I remember correctly. 496 megabytes fits fairly easily into most people's um, uh, random access memory these days. I think I have like four gigabytes of memory on my computer. So it you're running the whole game at once and it's it's easy for your, most computers these days to do that. When you're running the game, the game's in memory and this program, this nifty little thing, it reads the whole program's memory and lets you modify it. It lets you search through it and modify it. As you can imagine, 496 million characters or bytes is, uh, that would be a challenge to go through but it, it gets you to search through it and do all sorts of stuff and it's really fast at least on my on my system so cheat engine you simply type it in you go actually to their main page and you could just click that oops that'll download automatically cheat engine for um for 64 bit I guess but if you click downloads or maybe it's just 6.4 and then when you start in installing it, it'll ask you whether 132 or 64 bit, depending on your system. Again, you just have to, s well, not again, but you just have to see your Windows settings for that. Um, one thing I didn't say earlier before I get into Cheat Engine is that when you're downloading PCSX2, there are different, there are different, I think, installment options for Windows, Linux, Mac. So you cannot, you, you, you don't just have to have it for Windows. Oh my God. Oh. Uh, was a burp or about trying to um, <clears throat> you don't just have to have it for Windows you can have it on other uh, on other operating systems as well but uh, I'm not sure if it'll work because I haven't tried those I'm not sure if you can see your tactics or anything but you know just play the game as much as you can excuse me just play the game as much as you can and uh, let me look at cheat engine now so cheat engine it'll download to this and it looks complicated as fuck. If you remember around uh, 15 minutes and 27 seconds inside of the first video that I made for Tactical Mastery, I started talking about Cheat Engine, I opened up the window real fast and it just looked like a whole bunch of letters and characters and stuff. It, I, it was actually pretty intimidating. But it's not. When you first start, they'll give you this Cheat Engine tutorial. You can go through that. And if you go past a couple of screens on this, you'll be, you'll be better set than I am to modify game files in Romance of Three Kingdoms 8. Or modify uh, the game's information. So, what is this about a password? I don't know. Um, yes, it is. Uh, the tutorial is pretty long. It gets into some nitty gritty stuff about uh, like memory addresses and like things referencing one another. You can follow, follow like trails of other code that bridge code together. Let me come up with a, a substitute for the word code because that's not quite correct. I'll just say memory, I don't know. Uh, so right here, the first step, you know, you can watch, you can see the tutorial and now it doesn't matter, it doesn't make a difference. I'll show you what you need to do to get things done right here. Go to the process list by clicking that little computer icon and click on PCSX2 which happens to show up right here. Um, Given the fact that you can open up any process which is open on your computer that you want, it pretty much gives you a clue that you can modify memory for all of your programs and other games. But just use it for the PCSX2 for now. Open there. 
Uh, you probably can't even see my mouse cursor on this window. I think that's just a, a quirk of Camtasia running with this program. But hopefully highlights of things will help. Um, so I've opened up the process and there's no, been no visible difference so far. Um, but when we go back to PCSX2 and resume it, then, you know, we're operating the game. Let me put this on safe slot eight so I can come back to it and show you guys something about how the um, cheat engine works. When I open it up for the first time and I do this process thing, you'll see that the screen is frozen. But then you might hear something soon about it going back to the cinematic. The screen's frozen. If that freezes when you open it up and make it as a process, just pause PCSX2 and resume, and it'll take you back. No need for panic. Loading back up to eight. We press start. And um, now I'm going to read notes on what I made for what I'm gonna do in this video because it's just a lot of stuff. Hold, give me one second. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna straight, go straight to new officer creation here because that's the first step most people, well, some people do, uh, that I always do when I play this game. And it's just a good way to see how these features um, come about into changing the game's uh, running memory. Um, first off, once you, okay, let me just do this first. So we go in. And, you know, I'm just gonna alter some data. As a matter of fact, this old officer, let me take a look at him real quick because I'm gonna remake him. But you see, he has the hero skill right here. I got that through the cheat engine. Tactics, I always set those to the cheat engine as well, but I'm really bad at remembering stuff like this, but let me see if I can remember that <laughs> for later. And this skill lineup, Power Brave General 176. Because I'm gonna remake him. I'm gonna delete him and remake him. So, let me just do that real fast. So, Vural's deleted, my favorite officer is gone. Uh, and I'm gonna start it up again. Now, pretty much I'm just gonna type Vural. So I made his name, nothing special. Set his birth here real fast. Oops. We want to go back and modify him some more. So his name's been set, his birth year's been set, everything else is waiting in the wings. What we're going to do here is, what you want to do, you see this blue box right here where it says scan type and this value type right here? Well, we want to search for his name. These are boxes for searching for things. So in value type, we look down here and there's a whole bunch of different values you can pick. You can search for different binary things, you can type in binary which is zeros and ones. You can type in bytes in hexadecimal form, which is two hexadecimal letters written back to back. You can type in, um, in doubles or quadruples or octuples of bytes. You can check for floats, which are just like decimal numbers. Um, I'm gonna skip double, I don't know what the fuck that is. Arrays of bytes, so you can check for as many bytes as you want. But here, we're gonna search for the string, vrao. The string is just um, a succession of letters, basically. So V-U-R-A-O with a space in between is what we're searching for. I'm gonna keep it case sensitive, but you can leave it as you want. It'll affect your search results if it's case sensitive and you're using lowercase, though, so be careful. You can search for text, that's the only scan type here. We're gonna click first scan, so it's gonna look through all the memory, all 496 million lines, or however many that was, and it gets in a couple of seconds. And then we have these five options for where Vu Rao's game code can be inside of new officers for creation. So let's just browse memory regions for these things. And we're gonna be looking, this, the hex editing takes a bit of in, like intelligent perusal, or uh, intelligent, whatever I wanna say. It, it takes some rational analysis of what's going on inside of these memory addresses. You have to figure, if we're looking for Ru Rao, and we're looking for him for the purpose of changing some of his games, the game characteristics here, like skills, tactics, abilities, and so forth. We want to look for stuff that has a lot of information next to his name. And when we see a lot of information next to his name, inside of the, inside of browsing that memory region, when I right click that, I go to browse this memory region or control B. We want to look for 
things that'll give us a clue as to if that is the new officer code that we're or the new officer memory addresses that we're modifying because there are five addresses here but any single one of them or maybe even multiple of multiple things of them have Vurao in them have Vurao's information in them it also not to be one uh but all right so this is his name that's the o i just clicked o on the right on the left side when it's blue i'm clicking it when it's yellow that's the corresponding other side so i'm clicking the v click the o click 56 click 6f but when you look up here um it, it can be very difficult to see if what you're modifying is what you want but by comparison we can look at say zng right here and he's only got a few addresses here right so perhaps those are the only relevant addresses they're about right here corresponding to Wu Rao. these are the only relevant addresses and if you think about it well 70 in hexadecimal we could just get a hex converter out or it could be um what is it four six if you like math google hex converter click the first option on math is fun and it gives you this very handy box that translates don't click that just make sure it's numbered that translates from between binary decimal and hexadecimal since we're used to dealing with decimal and that's 70 that i want to check is indeed four six the other ones are 40 those are two eight so we want to look for memory addresses that have perhaps four six and two eight unless it's encoded in a different way and if you remember from the first video that's his his character code a702 or 02a7 i'll go more into stuff like that later we're looking for four six and two eight and i don't see it here at all there's a two eight right here but you'd expect all these abilities to occur in succession right right here right two eight four is it i'm um, sorry hold on four six two eight a really short memory um there is no four six there's one two eight but we'd expect three of them therefore you can deduce and you'd have to do a lot of deductions and be correct and you can deduce that this isn't new officer creation this is something else and as a matter of fact the fact that there are dates here should clear you in to uh to the possibility that this is the memory cards information so there's multiple clues as to what things can be inside of the memory. So we're going to browse the second region. And already, it, it takes a really close look, right, at things comparatively and, um, and within itself to see what we're handling here. But uh, this is one of the instances where the information is misleading. If you remember the first video, I said formal officer registry was where I was um, s where was where the game stored all the information on the officers inside of inside of it. This has all the officers, all my new officers, and then it goes up to some of the NPC officers. This one, this is old information that was on my memory card. This is from when before we deleted it. Maybe, I'm not sure. You see the four six here and the two eight here. So these are corresponding to 70s and 40s. So what happens if we if we change some of this? Let's just put like 70. You know, 70 right here at that 46, 70 right here at that 46, and 70 right here at that 46. Well, it didn't update in the game, but one of the things you have to do sometimes is go into another screen and click out, and it didn't change anything. 70 and hexadecimal. That's not 70. <laughs> In decimal that is uh, 112 so I'm not seeing 112 war pop up this isn't the new officer information this is the misleading addresses that are part of the formal officer registry but not the new officer screen or information that has to occur somewhere else so just keep looking and this is another one of those memory card things possibly browse this another one of the memory card things Lastly, browse this memory card thing. So I was wrong. Maybe that's not misleading. Or maybe we're not looking closely enough. It is misleading, in fact. I know this because 
one, it occurs at a different memory address, and two, the 70s would have changed the values. Like, the 282828 would be the repeating 40s. If I put 3E or 34, those values should change when I flip screens, but they don't. So this isn't new officer information. Looking for where information is at is just as important as being able to modify it later on. It's more important, otherwise you wouldn't be able to modify it. Rao isn't in the usual name, but it's kind of short too. Let's see if we can find just simply Rao and see if, if there are additional addresses that show up with Rao in them. So I, I clicked new scan and then first scan. This one's changing. Things that changed, you saw R-A-O-H on the top. If it's changing memory stuff, it's probably not what you want. And you don't want to mess with it. That's like running process stuff. Sometimes if you if you change that, you can freeze the game. <laughs> you don't want to. Um, so that first address is clearly irrelevant. Second one, let's browse that region. That's just this simple Vural that we had earlier. Second region, this is the other memory address that was false, that didn't, that didn't pertain to new officer information. The, this third one, well, that's the same thing. Route occurred twice. That's why those addresses are so close to each other. Now remember when Vu Rao had the space and stuff, those addresses were close to each other. So those addresses are close to each other, but these three are not. Let's look into them. And this is... Uh, that's not what we... Uh, I don't think that's what we want either. Looking up and down, maybe it is what we want. I said 4028. There's one two eight here, but there there's not more than one two eight. Even if I go up a bit, so that's not it. Let's look here. Browse this memory region right here. More numbers. Maybe it was it. Browse this memory region. More numbers. So we have to surmise, and this it's it's pretty difficult and cumbersome, but we have to surmise that maybe this is the new officer creation information. Oh, uh, another way to check that is to put this move this to the side, this on one other side, and see if any code changes when you change the abilities. Uh, so putting that to the 75, nothing changed over here. When it changes, you'll have some red pop up and stuff. So this is going to be even harder than I thought starting out. It, it can be pretty tough sometimes to find addresses. I don't see four zeros or two eights anywhere. So the name isn't getting us anywhere, which is kind of sad. What we have to do then is maybe search these numbers. So let's put it back at 70. 70 is 48. Once again, let's start a new scan. We're going to change the scan type to when you're searching for a number this small, it's going to be two bytes. You can enter the number in hex or not, but it's seven zero. It'll automatically search for the hex form. It searches for all occurrences of 7-0 within those about 500 million lines of memory. Now when we change it to 72, something should have changed to 72. So we make that 72, and instead of clicking new scan, don't click new scan, click next scan so you can change, so you can search for those values that change to 72. Click it again because things are changing a lot. Click it a couple of times. Click it some more times. And you'll see that <laughs> We, it narrows our options down to a few things that have changed to 72 in the meantime. 73. Two things have changed to 73. We readily see them now. But let's just then double click each of these addresses to add them to our address list on the bottom, which is convenient for tracking things that are relevant to what you're looking at. And also, later on down the line, they can be used to save um, to save the addresses, to save the ad address list that you've already found, because it takes some time to find, you want to save where those are found at, you can save them as a file here. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, it's, it's recording. Um, so yeah, you could just save, you s it saves it as a cheat engine table, and it saves that table of addresses on the bottom. Just save it later. I'm going to save it to ROTK8. Um, 
hex editing video. You save it to whatever you want. So this is for the purpose of the video. These are the two addresses, we haven't looked at them yet. But this, right clicking this on the bottom gives us the same option to browse that memory region as was up here. If I click new scan and I lost where those values were, I still have them on the bottom now. And I've, I've saved where they are. I'm saving again. So let's, let's browse this region and look at the memory addresses first. 21E and 21F. It seems like they'd be close to each other, but remember that there's a lot, there's a lot of information inside of like 10,000 or 100,000 bytes. That's a rough estimate. Um, but just browse the memory, browse the memory region. Mm -mm. And right here we see 49. Remember 70 was 46, so 49 is 73 in hexadecimal. 28 is 40 in hexadecimal. So. This might be what we wanted to find. But at the same time, the other thing that we saw earlier might also be what we want to find. And you'll see that that's the exact same code, but it doesn't have our officer's name like the other one did. So I'm going to, just pretending like I'm looking at this at the, for the first time, I'm gonna guess that the first one is relevant to new officer creation because that's some extra information that we entered as a new officer. So perhaps this stuff deals with officer creation. Making a 74, right, which is that from 49 to 4A. Um, 4A just comes after 49 in hexadecimal. So, yep, that changed. Let's see what else changes with um, things that we do differently. Make enough space here. When I press B to change the bonus and the maximums, you see that nothing's changed in the code here. In the, like when these numbers in the display change, that doesn't dis it doesn't change what we already have because if we click to say cancel, what we already have has not changed. So these are the unchanging values in the background. But if we updated the abilities over here after we changed them and pressed OK, then all that stuff changed. But that sounds like I'm exaggerating, I really am. These two addresses and this one changed. Oh wait. Well, some shit changed. Let's just do it again. And <laughs> try and keep track this time of what exactly changed. This, 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 and this. So what the hell do these correspond to, you might say? Well, they correspond to the maximums. 90 in hexadecimal is uh, five something, 5A. 5A. That's the war maximum. 73, remember that's 4-9, uh, that's the intellect maximum. So this would be the political maximum, 4F. 49 and 4F, the space between those is 6. 47 is 71. Like 46 was 70, 47 71, and that's the charisma maximum. 94 is 5E. So 5E corresponds to either here or here as the bonus. But you'll see here that we have two spots open for the bonus right here. This one, which shows our available bonus versus the bonus that's total. When I press circle, this one changed for the available bonus as expected. And so did this one because I added one to Charisma. So stuff's changing and this is relevant to new officer creation. So what you wanna do is save this whole block of addresses by a name that's familiar to you later on by highlighting on this right side the whole officer's name even with these extra uh, characters inside. These characters note here that there are eight here and then there's a zero zero for, for not just a space but for a break between the names and then there's some other stuff here. This is basically restricting our name to eight characters, so there's no way to change that. And this one similarly will restrict our name to eight characters because I'm pretty sure that something else will fill up these two blocks of code later. So we count how many there are, four, eight, 12, and we're going to right click over here to add this address to the list. And after that, it gives us an option of what to add. Well, there's 12 here, 12 bytes, so you want to click an array of bytes just to fit 12 in there. You can either click array of bytes or you can click 
text. And the length is also 12. We'll, we'll put new officer creation Vrurao. You'll see later on that Vrurao isn't, it doesn't matter because this is just the place in memory where all new officer creation occurs. So this is pretty much temporary until we save in the memory card and then pick somebody else to make. That will change this address to their name and their information. Okay, so we found where the new officer stuff is at. Let's see what else we can we can modify. We found new officer, we found how to adjust the abilities. You'll see that the maximums are 907-37971. Let's just go crazy on it. Change this. Oh, first, maybe we could add these addresses as well. Perhaps that would be a good idea. Add just address to list. It's 4, 8, 12, 16 bytes. So it's a array of bytes and it's 16. And these are um, new officer attributes. Click OK. And the new officer attributes are actually added to the list in decimal form, so it's very easy to see. When you click in that, you modify these numbers and you can modify what's over here. You can copy this and then paste it into the maximums here that we're going to also add to as an address. And I'm not going to show you why, but I'm going to tell you that if you don't add both of those and modify both of those to the same numbers, then they're going to reset and it'll be very inconvenient. So add this address to, li to the list as well. And these are the new officer attribute maximums. New officer attribute max is again an array of bytes with a length of 16. Each of these squares is a byte, as you can readily see. Alright, so let's let's see the problem that I said earlier if you change this to 100. Oops, 1000. I don't know, maybe that's legal. If you change that to 100, that becomes 64. That's 90. Let's click abilities out. 100 out of 90, if we clicked OK and save that, when we go back, it'll go down to the maximum, most likely. Uh, let's look for Rurao here. Click inside. Oh, it didn't. It modified the maximum as well. So I guess you only have to modify the attributes. Out of prudence, or maybe a previous problem I had, I've always obsessively, and we can get rid of these too. We don't need them anymore. It's, in, it's these two addresses is what these are. So select them both and delete their records. When you delete the records, you don't delete the memories itself. You just delete the list down here where it's showing up. We'll update our file of the table. And yeah, it, if you want, you could probably just include the attributes, not the maxes. Uh, except that I said that I used to have problems here. Um, yeah, and then make them anything you want. The thing is with these zeros, these all correspond to the separate byte positions. A byte holds a maximum number of 255. There are 256 possibilities with zero, but the maximum number we can have there is 255. <laughs> and you can guess it, we'll, that it'll change our maximum war. Now it'll change actually our war score to 255. But it's even stranger than that. Um, you know what? I'll experiment a little bit and you know not be so that be so uptight and get rid of that second address because possibly it's not needed. Let's let's just go crazy and click F F F F F F F F. That'll make maximums. I'm I'm guessing if this were my first time, I'd be guessing that this whole thing refers to war. I'd be trying to, you know, get a really high war score. Well, it's not going to be just 255. You know million. It's not going to be that. These aren't zeros. These are 255s. These aren't hundreds. These are 255. So it's 255 to the fourth. <laughs> so FF, once again, you see 255. FFFF is 65,535. FFFFF, that's 16,777,215. FFFFFF is 4,294. You can see the number. It's huge. <laughs> So you can have a war that big, or maybe you can't, because it'll actually go to negative. <laughs> you went backward, which is funny. So addresses that go backward, one less than that is E. This should be negative 2, if I put E here. If I go back, 
it's not negative two, it's, oh my god, negative one, 16 million something. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to go trigger happy with this and change too many things. But maybe if we just put zero zero here, then it'll go back to being positive, and it does. It's actually the positive 16 million, 777,215. And if we just test the limits of how far we can go, let me click 7F here. Perhaps this will be positive. Indeed it is. As a matter of fact, it's positive 2,147,000,000, some odd. One more address than that is make, makes an 8,0 here, which makes it a negative number. So it's just a funny way about how these numbers are stored as hexadecimal, but the maximum score you can have then for any given war before the game resets it on you because it's just stupid. The game will reset it on you while you're playing at random points. I can't really say when, it just happens. Like, say, when you get an item, it'll reset, but not just then. Well, this is the number that's the maximum for any attribute that you can have in the game. And uh, strangely enough, even with 2 billion as an intellectual score, you probably can't persuade anybody to annex their cities. I've tried that. It doesn't even work. They still have to have like zero troops and zero supply and all that annoying business. So let's go back to normalcy. Change this to uh, not just 64, but five. Oops. I didn't even press my controller. Let's actually go back to, to this right here. And it shows these addresses separate. 255 for the FF, 255, 255, 127. Let's make this 94, 000, 000. And then change the other ones while we're at it. 89, 81, maybe slightly different numbers than I had previously, 97. Remember the maximum you can go in any one of these numbers is 255. If you try more than that, uh, I, hesitate to, I hesitate to ask what that'll do. But since I'm sitting here in the in the pilot's chair, let's just be adventurous and put 384 or something. Well, it defaults to 128. All right, so maybe that wasn't too bad, but the game will freeze on random parts for you, and I don't want to waste too much time. So that's 94. Now we got attributes of 94, 89, 81, 97. These are just maximums for the character creation. They don't correspond to the maximums later in the game. Those are calculated separately for training purposes. I mean, and now we're going to look for other addresses. Let me just save this so far, what I have. Another nifty thing about the PCSX2 is you probably don't want to do this during new officer creation. But you can save stuff right here, like put save states in, and those will act as, you know, loose, pretty pretty close representatives of memory cards. Once again, if I were to save in here, during the new officer creation, there's a quirk between making saves and reloading memory card, or di the digital memory card. That's just a file in your computer. There's a quirk in that where it won't load the memory card and then you'll lose the information. So it's pointless to make a save state inside of new officer creation, but you can do it afterward. Uh, outside in the main menu, and I'll probably end up doing that later. Excuse me, just to show you. We're at the very beginning title, so you can bypass the whole beginning sequence of the, P of the PS2 and the cinematic <gasps> and the Koei thing and everything. Save some time. Oh my god. Hold on, let me take a break. I need to get rid of these hiccups. Wow, that's much better. Alright, um, hopefully. So let's pick, get uh, Vura out back in here. This is Saturday night. Yes, I'm a loser. I don't care. <laughs> no, I just really wanted to make this video. No, I'm lying. Um. <laughs> All right, so we're back here with we were out, and you'll see the maximums were already automatically changed. Next, naturally, perhaps it would be interesting to look at motivations and personalities because I never did that before myself. Just was never interested in it. Actually, let's just do everything. How about that? Gender. If I change to female, changes the character code here, and 
I thought it changed something else down there. Yeah. One zero. So, E902, what does that correspond to? Perhaps portrait, because it's changing the portrait, right? So, this is, let's add this address to this. And this is the gender. I'm making NO for a new officer, <laughs> not no gender. <laughs> and a new officer gender. And I'll put one is male. So, to test that theory, let's put zero. You know what? Let's include the information one is male, zero is female. Because after all, females have X chromosomes and it takes a Y, an additional thing to make a male. I don't know. No, don't change the gender. We want to see if it changed on its own. And it did. And it has the old portrait. So this is a way of getting, um, you know, opposite gender portraits if you want. That's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Let's put a one back there. So, you know, I do like, uh, do like my guys here. <laughs> um, so let's just go to back to the face. And, uh, God, that's a lot of distracting information. Let me just like to say this. And delete those officers that I was going to use for no reason. Give me a couple of seconds. This will take a little while. And I am back. And it's recording. So let's uh, put that back here. And I'll tell you where I was dead again. So we know where to find the gender. Um, let me just... For your future purposes, so you don't get confused and I don't get confused. Because maybe I'll use this table later. Myself. It's going to be very long by the time this is all done. I have to remember to keep these videos around an hour. This will probably be a few. Not like last time where it's less than I thought. Um, face. Let's see where the faces are modified here. Uh, I wish... Oh, there is some extra space here. Let's just do that. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't too difficult. <laughs> um... And I could also just rescale the screen here. Just trying to fit the whole thing. Fits right there. There we go, that's fine. Um, so let's change the face and see what part of the code changes here. That's this. Sometimes if you have a blue here, if I clicked on this address and it was to change, it might not, I have to deselect it by clicking, you know, some empty part of the screen. Um, if we were to change, then the blue would, might obscure it. I don't pay that much attention. If we pick this guy's the face, that's 02A7. This guy's the face, 02A3. 02A3, 02A7. Then. No, I'm just getting stuff mixed up in my head. Um, this is different from the, the character, the new, or the officer code that I spoke of in video one. Obviously, because this is not Isaac Newton's face. So, you don't have to worry about that. As I just did. Um, so, let's put portrait. And it's a, it's a two-byte thing at the address to the list. Two bytes. Portrait. N-O portrait. Yes. I am not concerned. I'll put in point for... Just double click there to change the name. And dot O. All right. Um, so we have the new officer portrait code. When it has A302 like this, let me open up the, uh, this thing again. Zero two A three. What's or A three zero two? I keep saying zero two A three for a purpose. A three zero two. That's forty one thousand seven hundred thirty. But zero two A three is six seventy five. And Cheat Engine is registering that thing when we highlight it and put it down here at six seventy five. So that tells you that the bytes for the 
for these two values are reversed. The way that this information was organized earlier should have told you that too. Like, from the addresses in the war, we modify this, there are big changes, this one are small, hundreds changes, these are billions changes. So, the addresses, when they are associated to each other, they're put in reverse. So, from lesser to greater. It's no big deal. Um, let's look at birth year, see if we can find that address. Changing it to 177 changes this. B1, B is 11. 16 times 11 is 176, plus 1 is 177. You'll see that from adding this address to the list. That but, we'll put in O, birth year. Minus 100. <laughs> right. Because it's minusing 100. There's no, no other information. Oh shit, no it's not. Oh, I'm stupid. Oh man, I must be thinking of something different than I am. I'm thinking of the uh, former officer registry, they minus 100 there. Alright, even though I just calculated it. So, that's how short my memory is, my short term memory is. B1 is 176, or 177. So, <laughs> let's look up 2014. <laughs> D07. You'll never be able to play this officer if that's the case. But he was born in 2014. That's that's pretty uh alright, that's useless. B100. Let's go back. <laughs> um traits and stuff. So I have to open up the FAQ that I had open the other day. Remember when I told you that this is not useless. That um the game facts has a list of FAQs for this game and officer stats pack made by Douglas Lee um, way back in 2004 is a really good FAQ that tells you a lot of hidden stats in the game and it's based on the PC version he says that somewhere right here PC version but perhaps these numbers are also in the game or have some influence in this game such as compatibility that actually does have an influence in this game and I showed you uh, in video one that it has influence with 6a being 106, and that was I, Isaac Newton's compatibility. He was compatible with one child somehow. When you make a new officer, this number is randomly chosen, and then it's altered when you set a friend to it. So we'll be able to find that when we set a friend to it. That won't be for a little while, even in the next video. Ferocity, Calm, Ambition, Justice, and Lifespan. If you look up here, it denotes rankings for different things that, um, that determine personality of the officer, independent of compatibility. So like Cow Cow's scores are 7, 7, 12, 15, and 0. Or 7, 7, 15, 12, 0. 10, 0, whatever. 7, 7. Firstly and Calm have maximums of 7. Ambition has a maximum of 15. Justice has a maximum of 15 itself as well. And Lifespan has a maximum of 7. Lifespan is sort of a rough measure of how long they live. It's really rough. If you go to Zhou Yu, if you go to Zhou Yu, his lifespan is 2. Zhu Liang, his lifespan is 3. Even though Zhou Yu lived in his 30s and Zhu Liang in his 50s. It's just one more. I don't know, maybe that's okay. But then, Cao Cao lived in up to 5 and that's in his 60s. He died at, I think, age 65. So, and also, well no, that's fine. He had 5 from Ming Di's War Manual. Um, so yeah, these numbers determine things that might be in our game or not, because this is the PC version, and I'm still trying to hunt them down myself, actually. Perhaps they are determined by the traits, motivation, and personality. So when, let me get the face back to the one that I like for this name. Um, traits, power, justice, ambition, uh, advancement, and moderation. If I would click Ambition and press Circle, Skill and Tactics Initiate, reinitialize, yes. So that you kind of have to have like one of those like flash memory minds or something where you just see things that pop up and you remember where they popped up. I think I just clicked them, but yeah, it changed a lot of stuff. But remember it said Skills and Tactics will be reinitialized. We gained, we had two skills earlier, now we have five. So it changed our skills and it changed our tactics. This two here, well, to look at the tactics corresponds to Bombard. 
coincidentally enough, I'll just tell you that it does correspond to Bombard, so that's part of the tactics. These ones are all part of the skills. This four will most likely be that trait of having an ambitious uh, motivation. So this might be three, advancement, yes. This might be two. This might be one. This might be zero. I can't think of a special reason to have these in our memory list, but you know, why not? And it's distinctly different from the the first to come ambition justice lifespan scores that were put into that FAQ. Perhaps it's because it's computer, perhaps it's because that information is determined elsewhere. Alright, so we have this address to list again, and how long do I have in the video? Over 10 more minutes. Uh, this is motivation. New officer motivation. I get motivation personally mix them in my head all the time, but hopefully you just remember that yourself. This guy's gonna be power. So where's personality determined? Berserk, where's that? Er, right here. This changed. This changed, this changed, I think, or this one. But those might be skills. I think he had infantry, cavalry, bowmen, taught in patrol the last time. Oh, never mind. Um, I'm not going to go into that yet. Berserk. So this might be it. If this turns into a two now, we're going to put it at calm. Yep. And now three. And now four. We'll know that we're dealing with personalities now, so we can add this address to this as a new officer personality. And the numbers don't tell you much, you just have to remember that, you know, the succession of the numbers, what they mean. If you're experimenting, like I like to do, and you make a five here, what's that gonna be? Nothing. <laughs> so don't make fives there. How about six? This is probably going to be nothing as well. So just, you know, keep that to something rational. Sane, power brave, that's nice. Alright, so we've already done the abilities. Now we're going to get into the skills. <clears throat> skills are, in some ways, skills and tactics are the most interesting and important parts of the game. Beyond tactics, or beyond abilities, base abilities, being a sufficient number in order to do damage or do strategies or whatever. Through uh, skills. So let's look at what changes here. Now, what's funny is I've been hex editing some of the later games in the in the Three Kingdoms, uh, in the Three Kingdoms series. Women's Three Kingdoms 10, for example, has all those skills that they they have 42 skills inside of that big block. Well, they're not arranged as you'd expect. It's very confusing sometimes the way that. Koei decides to arrange the skills in order. But if we change this, nothing's showing up here. In our in our main new officer creation. Oh shit, that was nice. I don't have all the inventor portraits, so. But these these just changed. Right here. But we're still not sure what corresponds with what. I mean, any of these ones can be any of these things, guard, patrol, taunt, cavalry, or bowman. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that the earliest you'll get out of here is patrol. This is patrol, this is guard, this is taunt, this is cavalry and bowman. Because you just have to know, either through experimentation or being told it, like I'm telling you, the order of the skills. Fight comes first, then it's plan, govern, charm, medicine, weather, plow, trade, build, patrol, invent, guard. These are how it's listed in these memory addresses, and elsewhere. Persuade, Reverse, Taunt, Confuse, Rumor, Infantry, Cavalry, Bowman, Navy, Scout, and then lastly, here is your Genius Sage. In accordance with this theory, let's say that I want to put down the first and last skills so that we can get the range of it down. If this is what I said was the earliest one, Patrol, then this one would be Build, Trade, Plow, Weather, Medicine, um, charm, govern, plan, and fight. Let's make this zero one. And if this is as I said it was Bowman, 
then this is navy. Scout, you also just have to know that they skip by four. But you can see that if you roll in random things. And obviously it goes down four. Now this is sage. This should be sage. Exit out of that by testing triangle. We click in the skills and that's exactly what pops up. We did fight and sage. So those are the new skills that we have. We've changed the skills and we found out the range in which the skills change. This three corresponds to a tactic. Charge, the only tactic that we have, and actually the first tactic to be listed because this is the last skill to be listed. So let's highlight all of these skills from fight to sage and all the addresses that correspond to them. Let's then add the addresses to the list and we have to count as an array of bytes how they pop up because there's no way to condense these things of four bytes into one code that's, you know, list a number. Um, not to my knowledge, you can't list them in quadruples, just as bytes. Well, now we have to count. There are one, two, three, four, five, six rows of AM16, which is 96 plus eight, 104. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. 20, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, I can't even count by fours. I just, I can only multiply it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just cause I'm paranoid, 96, 104. That should be it. When we click in here, this is Sage at the end. And this is Bowman, Navy, this zero. Skips three zeros each time. Scout, which makes it hard to read, but you can just go into this and do whatever. That's Scout. Hero, Seer, Seer, Genius, Sage, correct. When we go back to the beginning, that's the, that's that. If you had counted the bytes incorrectly, not everything would show up, and that's important. So these are the skills. We can modify the description afterward. We just say new officer skills. But you have to remember yourself. Can I assign a note to this or something? What happens if I show an hexadecimal? Nothing, just a lot of extra zeros that we don't need. Let me change that back to decimal. Change color. I'm just, I'm just experimenting with stuff. Um, so yeah, there's nothing to tell you what I just told you was towards the order of the skills, but I'll probably put that in the description later, the order of the skills and tactics, because it's important and it can be hard to find sometimes. Let me see if this was medicine real fast. Indeed. So I'll make that zero zero again. And actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start modifying these to the character that I want. So this is gonna be zero zero. This is charm. Let me think about what I had before. Plow, trade, build. Oh, wait, medicine, weather. Plow, trade, build, patrol, and invent. Persuade. Reverse. Taunt, confuse, rumor, infantry. Cavalry, Bowman, Navy, Scout, Hero, and then No Seer, Genius, or Sage. And that should get me the skills that I had. Oh fuck, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> That's totally wrong. Wait, no it's not. Let me think about what I was doing. Guard, that's right. If you switch these all down by one, and presuppose that guard comes before persuade, which is what I forgot, so I'm not gonna go back and change everything. Then we'll have our patrol and event, which was was what I wanted. But then we'd have guard and persuade, taunt, confuse, space, infantry cavalry, or infantry no cavalry, bowman, no navy, scout, and then hero. So let me, damn, go back and change that. This was, um, this, um what? Fuck. Control, invent, guard, persuade, reverse taunt, confuse. I had to move the cursor right now here, but you probably didn't see the cursor. That's confuse. Rumor, no rumor. Infantry, no cavalry. Yes, bowman. No navy. Yes, scout. And yes, seer, finally. Triangle here. Because the temporary skills as listed in the previous screen were elsewhere, or elsewhere stored in the memory, so you don't have to worry about exiting there. But when you come back in, 
That's exactly what I wanted, is his previous skill lineup. Okay. We're almost done with the Morphous creation, so I'm just going to finish that in this video. Um, let me save for now. And then we'll get into some other stuff in the actual game. Wow. So we've added our skills. Now to add our tactics. Well, there are 15 tactics, and if you presuppose again that it begins with charge, which it does, and then goes by 15, or goes in 15 blocks of 4 for a total of 60 addresses. Uh, that's 4, 12, 16, 20. 4, 12, oh, I can't count, fuck. <laughs> What's 15 times 3? 15 minus 3, 12, and then we just have 3 more. Okay. Uh, okay, so that should be 15 blocks of 4. 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15. Add that address to the list. Array of bytes, 15 lengths long. And these are going to be the new officer tactics, supposedly. But the tactics, just like the skills, occur in a slightly rearranged order. It's not too bad. Again, just like the skills, you just have to switch a couple of things. It's cavalry. Oh, no, sorry, no. It's charge, berserk, harass, ambush. This is the way it's encoded in the hexadecimal in the memory. Charge, berserk, then harass, ambush. And then it switches to spear, wall, trample. And then fire, arrow, volley, bombard, air, storm, over to torn, blaze, rock slide, magic. And then finally, siege. So remember, we had a four, five, six here. No, four, six, five here. Charge was four, berserk, six. I say six, I mean mastery. Berserk was mastery, spear was five, trample was zero. We didn't have any pharaohs or volleys. Bombard was M, Aerostorm was V, Harass was V, I think. Ambush was four. Did I make that MV? Yeah, I made it MV. So that. No, I did not. That was Harash V. Or, yes, Harash V, Ambush 4. And then Blaze was 2, Rock Slide 1. So let's just see. You know, let's just put those in, and you'll see that it corresponds to the order, which I showed you. And I'll show you again as I'm doing the memory. Charge is 4. I probably could have just done it right now. Charge is 4. Berserk is 6. Spear Roll. No, no, Harass was 5. Pressing arrow keys, ambush 4. Spear Wall is 5. Trample is 0. Fire is 0, because it sucks. Volley is 0, because it's relevant when you have a 6 in Bombard. A 5 in Arrow Storm. Torn 0. Blaze is 2. Rock Slide 1. Did I have any siege here whatsoever? Let me think about how many attacks I have. 2, 4, 8, 9, 10, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I guess I never had Siege, even though he relies on infantry. It's kind of a stupid decision. But there we go. I think that was my previous tactical lineup. Maybe I should switch him to Calvary, because... Nope, he's, he has Spirit Wall, so I'll just keep it. Whatever. Nobody's perfect. And I don't really like Siege anyway, the way that it gyps you and gives the computer an advantage in always having it be successful. Ugh, I fucking hate advanced. Terrible, terrible. Um, so, yep, I just put all these, um, what? I, hold on, brain farting all the time. And this isn't showing as, um, okay, yeah, I didn't times it by four. But we should do 15 times four, which is 60. So you can change the length of it by clicking Array of Byte and changing this to 60. So then it lists all the tactics. All the way to the end. This is... Rock Slide, Magic, Siege. Starting with Foreign. Charge. Damn, what is happening? Um... So, yep, we just, we got all of our addresses that we've found in New Officer creation and we know how to edit anything in the new rock and new office creation now so yep that's pretty much it we could change this portrait to anything we want but i'm not sure exactly where some of the special portraits are let's try d for no reason we got that one i don't like that one. f girls 
So it's a7. Let's try page 7. I'm just playing around a little bit. Computer players? We can't change the gender or the face, and now it's these extra guys. But what about... Who's the first one? I'm just intensely curious. Zhang Fei. <laughs> That's funny. Um, second one's probably going you. Yeah, third one's probably Lu Bei. So maybe Koei has a shoe bias. Oh, Lu Bu. Maybe it just has a war bias. Maybe it's ordered by war. If it's ordered by war, who's fourth in war? Um, Macau? Yep. Okay, so that's ordered by war. I think. Um, A702. Back to who we want it. Um, yep, yeah, so that's it. That's how you do new officer creation. And once we have the new officer created, I'll show you separately because I'll just tell you right now, what occurs here in the other places, like setting parents and friends, isn't part of this block here. If I were to set Vu Rao's parent to Vu Long Q, which is just the guy I have as his parent, and um, let me elongate this a bit so you can see further that there's nothing up there that corresponds to this character, just some ones. There's an, oh, there's a 02A7 up here. Let's change this Vulong Q to see if anything changes in the block and it doesn't. Delete the officer, parent. Looking up just to see in case it was up here. Delete the officer's parent, nothing changes. So that information isn't contained in the new officer creation section. Therefore, since we're going to another section, I'll go to a different video and show you how to find First off, we're going to start where the parents and the friends are set, and then compatibility scores are set. And then from there, we'll just, and then uh, character codes after that. And after that, we'll start a new game. And what the fuck? F903. And then we'll just, um, no, E903. F903. No, E903. Must be code for the screen. What if I change that to F903? Because I'm crazy. Oh, maybe I shouldn't just fool with stuff like that. But I want to. It doesn't make a difference. This is controlled elsewhere, it doesn't matter. I guess what I put in here. Alright, so, yep, I'm gonna end the video. Thanks for uh, watching this one, and go ahead and click hex editing video 2 of however many this is gonna be. Um, some, yep, we'll just do some more stuff there. Alright, see you then.